Let's talk about those non-contrast paints. Hello Bitsbrew, it's Craig from Bitsbox.co.uk here. This video, we're looking at all the paints that aren't contrast paints. So GW have obviously released the contrast paints and there's been so much hype around them and they are brilliant and we will do some videos on them for sure. But um, at the same time, they've released a lot of other paints and in this video, I'm going to be looking at them, using some of them out and just showing you guys what they're like. So yeah, before we begin, as always, if you're new to this channel and you like all things hobby related, then do feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. And before we begin, just a huge shout out to all of our Patreons. A massive thank you to you guys for supporting our channel. And if you want to know what our Patreon is all about, there's a link down below. So yeah, let's get straight into this. Okay, so disclaimer before we get into all of this. Uh, tw 26 of the new paints uh, were originally available from Forge World as airbrush paints. It was their airbrush range. And they are now, as you can see, they have joined the GW Air range, and they're in larger pots as well. So, as far as I'm aware, I never had the original Forge World ones, but as far as I'm aware, these are the exact same paints. And um, what's really nice is you have the clear paints. It's an orange and a blue. Uh, back here we've got like some purple, purple green, yellow. So they're really cool. Um, I've done some videos using the ghost tints from Badger, and I think these work very similar. Um, I'll probably do some videos on them in the future, because I'm very eager to play around with them. But there's some really nice colours here, and we're going to look at them in more depth in a moment, because these have also, apart from the clear colours, and for some reason two of these paints have um, been released as base and layer paints as well, and we'll have a look at them right now. So these are all the base and layer paints, what have came out of the Forge World range. Um, as you can see, most of them are base paint, which is really nice. And um, there's some really good colours in there that I'm quite interested in and excited for. Um, we'll go over them in a minute. Um, interestingly, yeah, I said there's a couple of regular colours what didn't make the cut. Um, Typhon Ash, which is like a light bony colour, and didn't seem to make the cut. Whether it's because it's too close to um, Ushabti Bone or something like that, I'm not sure. They still done the air paint. And also, um, I think it's Phalax Gold, yeah, Phalax Gold, which is quite a nice, really light, sort of goldy, bronzy colour. And um, that didn't, didn't get one either. So, but these ones did. Um, What's there, 15 here? So, 15 of the 26. Obviously, the clear colours have no need to be um, in this range. So yeah, these are the ones that are here. Um, I'm going to show you some footage of me using some of them. So starting with, um, I've got a Night Lord here with Night Lord's blue, which has already been painted on him. I'm going to take some of the Gal Vol Volback Red. Now I absolutely love this colour because it reminds me so much of the old um, Scab Red. And I think in this range of GW paints, I've been around for a while now, there just hasn't being a really dark red. Nothing really replaced the old scab red. Corn red was nice, but it just wasn't dark enough. So this Gal Vorbach red really um really um fits in that that sort of fills that void, should we say. So I can't even get my words out. And I think the Night Lord's blue does that sort of similarly as well. It's slightly darker than Cantor, and but it has a bit more of a greyish tone to it as you can see from this miniature. But yeah, really, really nice. Um, I know a lot of these Forge World colours were sort of designed for the Horus Heresy range. And that's why you got a lot of um, the green colours in there. But going back, we have like um, the, Lu uh, the Lupercal green, the Nocturne green, Sons of Horus green, and Vulcan green. There's also the Death Cold Drab, which is got this browny, greeny colour. Obviously, these are more suited for like Sons of Horus and things like that. And of course, um, the Word Bearer's red and Gal Fallback red. More suited to like the word bearers, and I think the Phoenician purple is quite good for the um, Emperor's children as well. It's nice to have another purple base paint because we did only have one. This one's slightly lighter than Nagarov Knight, and also we have this lovely bright yellow, this phalanx yellow, which is really nice, really nice color. So Corvus black is a colour I really like. It's a sort of very, very, very dark grey. Um, certainly a colour I think has been needed in the range. 
So I really like that. If you want to do like black armor that's not all the way black, then this is the color for you. And you can even put a non-oil wash on there to give your black armor a bit of depth. Um, it's really cool. But um, yeah, some of the new metallics I really like as well. The Grey Knight Steel is just this beautiful, almost bluey tinted silver. Really nice colour. And we have Iron Hand Steel, so if you want a slightly lighter base silver than Lead Belcher, then this is the paint for you. So yeah, they're the ones that have a Forge World range. However, there are still several paints that are brand new, and we're going to look at them right now. So starting with the Boron ones, and um, we, we all know Grey Seer. And Wraithbone are new primers for the contrast paints, and um, they've got base paints as well, which is really handy. Crax White has got his own base paint. Now, I don't know if I've got a dodgy batch or whether it really does look like this, but I don't know if you can see well on camera. It does look a little bit brighter on the camera, but there's so little difference between the two. The light's sort of making it look brighter, so I'm probably going to look like a liar, but um, that really looks grey when I apply it, so I don't know if it's just a bad batch or what. It's been shook up a lot but anyway move them aside because they're boring we have iron warriors now i love this paint this is a very dark metallic silver like even darker than lead belcher i think it's so cool It'd be really handy for chaos things like that um again another paint which was really welcome in the range we have kachan flesh so a brown flesh tone which is really nice and we'll come to some more flesh tones in a minute. We also have Barak Nar Burgundy, so a lovely burgundy colour. So, sort of a reddy purple colour, which we haven't had anything sort of close in the range before. So, that's really nice as well. As you can see, I'm applying it on the cloak for the Night Lords. And it's just, yeah, really complements the blue really well, and it's still a really nice colour. Now we have Morgast Bone, so whether this will be a staple of base a base colour for doing bones and stuff will remains to be seen. I quite still like using Rakhar Flesh, but yeah, it's more of a browny sort of bony colour. Um, really nice though, I'm sure it'll have lots of uses and it'll be quite good for terrain and stuff. And then we have a couple of darker flesh tones, so like the Blood, Blood Reaver's Flesh could be a good highlight for the Catachan Flesh, and if you want to do further highlights you got Night Quest or Flesh as well. So if you're doing like a darker tan or just an all round darker flesh tone, then there's some paints for that now, which is really nice. So yeah, um, six brand new paints there, or nine if you include these ones. I know we've already had Corex White as a spray. But yeah, um, not really seen anyone really talk about these because everyone's just going nuts on contrast, so hence why I'm doing this video. Um, but it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. Also, have some new technical paints. And um, there's also the contrast medium, but I sort of bundled that in for contrast paints. So, technically, there's four new technicals. Technically. <laughs> and um, But here, here's three. Um, let's get this one in shot, because this is for Biggie. Um, Modern Earth. This is a black crackle paint. Uh, that's really passed me by. Um, I bought the bundle with all the paints, so I didn't even know I was getting this one. Um, until I looked in the White Dwarf and that was used in there. So if you want to do your lava bases, then this is for paint for you, and that's why the um, base on my um, my Night Lord has been bright orange. Because you apply this over and that that will crackle and leave a really cool sort of lava looking base. So this is one that I think a lot of people have probably asked for. And we finally got one, so yeah, more than that. If I can see a lot of sort of fire slayers and um, players using this, and just anyone who wants to do a lava base, nice and simple, yeah, you've got a black crackle paint. And then we have technical ad coat and storm shield, which are just two vanishes. I believe one's gloss, one's matte. Um, I can't tell you which is which, but um, ad coat is usually glossy, so I would assume that's what it is. Um, but yeah, it's nice that we've. We've got them, and um, GW have been really sort of not too great on the old Varnish game um, recently. Um, I remember back in the older ranges, you had like your yeah, Varnishes there all, and um, I think they've only just had the ad coat for this, so it's nice that they've got a matte one as well. But yeah, that's all the new paints. 
I hope you enjoyed and um, watched me just use, a, use them briefly on this Night Lord miniature. And I'll get him finished up at some point in the future. But I thought I'd use him off to show off some of these new paints. And yeah, whilst everyone's going nuts on contrast, and contrast paints are cool, I've been using some. And no doubt I'll do some videos on them in the future. I thought, why not just do a video showing off all the others, because no one seems to be talking about these paints. And there's some really nice ones in here, and I look forward to using them much more in the future. So, um, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it, and if you have, please do give it a thumbs up. And yeah, um, thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget to, to like, subscribe, and all that jazz. And I'll see you all again in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out, and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.